Welcome in everyone here on Sports Gen. As we say goodbye to September, it's just about over, folks. I'm Blake Whaley. Alongside me is Matt Dean. And we are back for our fifth episode. Of course, this fall is really flying by, but it's just heating up before playoffs here. Yeah, we're down to the final week of the regular season in soccer, which of course uh, is always the first to start up your fall season. Yeah. Halfway done in high school football as well, too, Crazy. as we've got a lot of week four highlights to show you here to kick off the show. Uh, we're going to start with Centennial. Big road trip. North Metro TV was there on Friday night as the Cougars look to go to 3-1 and one after falling out of the AP Top 10 after a 28-41 loss at Maple Grove, the defending state champs in week three, taking on the one and two nights. Josh Lee got an interception to start the night. Maverick Harper would cap an 11 play 45 yard drive from one yard away to put the Cougars up six nothing. After a turnover on downs in their second possession, talk to me Goose, it's Maverick Harper again, his second one yard score, 12 zip Centennial. Cougars would get the ball to start the second half, get off me. That is Marcus Whiting, a 12 yard touchdown run, dragging two nights with him and the Cougs up by three scores. Will Bartle had 173 of his 182 passing yards in the second half. He would link up with senior Tevin Vognison for a 12 yard score. Whiting with some pressure on Bartle. He'd wrap him up on fourth down for the sack that would seal the win for the Cougars who went on to win 19 to 6 the final in this one. How big of a moment that was to come up with the takeaway, set the tone early in the game? Um, you know, I had a coach come up to me before the game saying, you're getting a pick right away. Guy, I had to believe him. He's, I mean, it's just my thing. And then I go, drop into my zone, ball comes, just grab it. Grab who, who was that coach that told you that? Can you, like, tell him if you want to get, like, an A-plus on your, like, test next week? Like, can you ask him to just make another prediction for you? Uh, yeah, that was Coach Gallagher. Thanks, Coach. Kind of, it's just what we do. We... We wind the clock down, just try and keep moving, keep keep pushing, you know. Got to thank the line, just battling every single play all game long. Got to thank Dalen, too, making the right reads. Just got to thank everyone. You know, it's nice to get this game out of the way. Yes, STM, yes, STMA at their home, homecoming night, you know. We came into it, we were ready to win. So, feels good. Looking, looking forward. Uh, Probably got to grind more. Got to be more physical, both sides of the ball. Defense is finally stepping up. They're getting physical. They're pounding everyone right now. Really good bounce back performance for the Cougar defense who had given up some big rushing totals the last two weeks. They settled things down here and nothing flashy from the Cougar offense, but effective. Their three touchdown scoring drives, all double digit plays, all went for at least 45 or more yards down the field. Couple of big pass, uh, pass completions to Josh Lee, who recovered an onside kick in this game and had the interception. Only two run plays of double digit yardage for the Cougars. You heard Maverick Harper talking about it wind down the clock, kind of grind teams down, and the Cougars really controlled this game physically up front on both sides of the ball as they improved to 3-1 and one on the season and find themselves back in the top 10 rankings in the latest poll that came out today where they now sit at number 9 in the Class 6A Top 10. Also in action on Friday night were the Spring Lake Park Panthers as we head into 5A football. SLP traveled to Rogers, a rematch of last year's section title game that the Royals, now the third ranked team in the state, won 21 to 7 last year. Senior Peyton Honnell with a 23 yard field goal would put the Royals on the board first, three nothing with 312 left to go in the first. A minute remaining in the first now and the Panthers inside Rogers territory. Beautiful option football. Mike Peterson in the control room smiling. Great SLP executed play. Matthew Buren from 31 yards out and the Panthers up 7-3. Early second quarter now. Reese Dawson drops back. Let's it eat. Finds Tanner Carlson for a 28-yard touchdown score. Royals up 10-6. Lamari Brown sniffing for the end zone from one yard away. The sophomore puts the Panthers back up 13-10. 
with his third score of the year. Royals knocking on the door. They add another field goal and tie it up at halftime, but the Panthers knotted up at 13-13 at halftime with the number three ranked team in the state. A little dip off from Dawson to the big man. That's Oklahoma commit Wyatt Gilmore shrugs off. Five Panthers loses his shoe. A 50-yard go-ahead touchdown with 57 seconds left in the game. So Spring Lake Park desperate, trying to take a shot down the field here and answer back. It ends up being picked off, and the Royals celebrate with a pick six. They'll take this one all the way back here to pad to the lead. What was a very competitive contest ends up being Rodgers improving to 4-0, staying unbeaten 26-13, uh, the final over Spring Lake Park. So contributions from a lot of backs for Spring Lake Park. Four guys combined for 178 on the ground. The defense does a pretty good job on the ground holding the Royals to just 134, but two big pass plays. The difference in this game, a 28-yard completion and the 50-yard touchdown to Gilmore, the top-rated recruit in the state of Minnesota, proves to be the difference in this one. Rodgers 4-0, dropping Spring Lake Park to 2-2 two and two on the season. Our last set of highlights from Friday night. We had the Blaine Bengals traveling to Osseo, looking to snap a two-game skid and taking on the 0-3 Orioles after Blaine were coming off a two-point loss against Anoka last week. Bengals knocking on the door first quarter. Junior quarterback Sam Shaughnessy carries it in from two yards away, getting the start under center on Friday for the Bengals. Another first quarter trip, another touchdown. Michael Douglas behind the candelabra and behind the right tackle, Gavin Smith. Bengals lead it 14 nothing end of the first quarter. On to the second now, Shaughnessy slings it down the field. Matthew Plankers from 33 yards away. He did a plank in the end zone. I don't know, is planking still a thing? Uh, Michael Douglas ends up taking a handoff here, shining through again. A one yard touchdown, his second of the game, 28 nothing Blaine at the half. Shaughnessy gets loose now. The quarterback showing a nice dual threat performance. 64 yards to the house using his legs and the Blaine Bengals landed on thick 35 nothing. Shaughnessy with a toss to Douglas this time. The O line for the Bengals roll out the red carpet in for an eight yard score. Douglas is third of the game. It's 42 nothing. Osseo would answer back, get on the board as Ethan Witcher would connect with Zymir Johnson, a home run pass for 47 yards in the score, but this one long gone for the Bengals. They'd add another in the fourth as junior Zach Carson notched his first varsity touchdown, 48-7 the final in this one. Bengals rushing for 368 in the win to go to two and two as we take a look at the standings on the left in 6A in the Metro North Centennials win on Friday in a subsequent 45 19 win by Maple Grove uh, at Anoka makes it a three way tie atop the standings. All eight of those teams you see there also reside in the same section. When you look ahead at playoff seedings, Champlain Park fell to two and two after a loss at Coon Rapids. So it is also a three way tie for fourth where the Blaine Bengals reside in the Metro North and the North Star West Maroon in Class 5A. Rogers jump into a, a first with a win over SLP. Monticello beat Irondale in a one-point game to put Spring Lake Park's rival to 0-2. Park Center were off in conference action this week, losing uh, at home to Cambridge Isani. So Rogers in control of that North Star West Maroon. Schedules upcoming for our three North Metro TV schools. Three big section games the next three weeks for Blaine. They host defending state champions in fifth rank Maple Grove on Friday. You can watch that on North Metro TV. Malik Mitchell and Justin Albachton on the call for that one. Centennial will play winless Osseo this week before they have the next two on the road. The next three for the Cougars, all section games. Uh, the Cougars, of course, back to number nine in the latest AP poll. SLP uh, will try to bounce off that loss to Rogers next up. It doesn't get much easier from the number three to the number eight ranked team in Class 5A. Three and one Andover who are coming off a 63-56 shootout win hosting the reigning state champs Elk River. If you're looking for a bright spot for the Panthers, the Elks rushed for 695 yards in a loss last week. So that is a team where maybe you can find some room on the ground as Spring Lake Park looks for the upset on the road at Andover. I had to get that fact in. Yeah, 695 exactly. yards rushing in a loss for Elk River. Yeah. Uh, so again, tall task coming up for uh, for Spring Lake Park this week and a lot of action. I'm out of breath. We're halfway through the yeah. high school football season.
Yeah, well, enough of American football, Matt. We got to head to the back to the field for football, the original kind of football, soccer. <laughs> We see our cat clash between the Bengals and the Spring Lake Park Panthers. Marcus Keita gets things started, a big strong hit. First saved, second, you can't save him twice. He blasted by Herrera, getting to celebrate, putting the Blaine Bengals on the board. 1-0 here, we're headed to the second half. Coach escorted here by this point, and the Spring Lake Park Panthers have some new life. They're able to net this one tie this game up this is Akinola he's able to make the Panthers feel like they are in this game a long driven shot Jacob Knockin comes a knocking putting the Panthers into the lead two to one here late in the second but coming down this flank I love the give and go down this near side but they get it inside the box to a dashing Marius Kita. He does it once, he does it twice, ties this game up at two apiece. This game's still going, nearly five minutes left in this game, inside the box, able to find Marius Kida to net this one on the left side to give the Bengals the lead, the advantage, three to two, and they win it. Uh, I think I'm able to get open just because my teammates, they're always there, they draw pressure, and they leave space for me, they're always looking for me, so just that understanding with your teammates to find you. I think it just takes like composure. Our coach, we know everything that he wants us to do. We practice it every day. It's just about uh, using it in the games and just staying calm because we know we're good enough to win. We just have to do it. Yeah, it's, it's tough going up 1-0. Second half comes red card. Our coach, head coach gets a red card and then we go down 2-1 pretty quickly. Um, it was just about getting the boys' mindset back on track, going out saying, hey, we can still win this game. And we went out there and just did just that talk about the end of this game a very important save as the Panthers putting the pressure on and of course sail one towards your net that could have tied this game up what was running through your head as that ball came towards you well it was tough because I, I actually gave up a goal on the on the second goal of theirs but I didn't want to so I, as I was watching them come towards me I was like I, I, I need this one I don't care how big it needs to be I need this one to, to help my team and, and make the earlier mistakes in the game right so that was all that was going through my head On our second cat clash of the evening, now the ladies turn. This is the Panthers getting inside the box, but a big save by Becca Snyder keeps this game nil-nil. Here as we get further in this first half, a corner kick using her head. Tessa Zockman, the coach's daughter, gets to net a goal, and that was one of her goals. Get one on a corner, and she does so, putting the Bengals in the lead one to zero. Panther is trying to get back in it. Stopped up again by Brecca Snyder laying out for it. It was 1-0 at half. Held that until the last minute 30 when Caitlin Kopp flicks this one past and they get the lead 2-0 and I do really win it think in that it's all fashion. about positivity and urgency and we are really about winning with love and staying connected. So yeah. that was definitely a big part of that. Um, I think a big part of it is also the coaches because when I stepped on that field in the second half they told me to put it in and I don't actually play forward I play defense so it's just it's so exciting going up top and putting one in for our team. Um, yeah it felt really good I've been wanting to get a header goal off a corner for a very long time so this was kind of a it was a good moment but it was an amazing ball from Sunny we've been working on those balls like constantly in practice so it was a really good ball and yeah it felt good <laughs> talk about going ahead to take on centennial here on tuesday have you guys talked about that or is that coming up here for practice yeah i mean we've definitely talked about it um i think we're gonna kind of just keep going in the same mentality as with the all the games that we've been going into really um it's another game it's going to be a really tough game and we know that and we're just gonna yeah just keep working in practice and yeah <laughs> As you take a look at the standings, you see Centennial just below Maple Grove at a conference record of 6-1 and 2. The Blaine Bankles right below 6-2 and 1. But Spring Lake Park Panthers on that bottom end of our three teams, 3-6 three, and 0. Oh. Yeah, Maple Grove, the number one ranked team in the state right now, still unbeaten with 10 wins and one draw. Uh, Cougars and the Bengals both with head-to-head -head losses already to the Crimson, but both uh, on some pretty good runs right now, five-game unbeaten runs, while the Panthers in the meantime are, are trying to snap out of a little bit of a skid right now. 
uh, as we move ahead here and take a look at the uh, upcoming schedules for uh, these three teams. And uh, hey, Blythe, what are you doing tomorrow? How about a cat clash between <laughs> Blaine and Centennial as we will be covering both legs of that doubleheader. The boys are playing the nightcap. Uh, always fun when those two teams match up in what is the penultimate home match of the season for Blaine. And uh, the Cougars also will be in action on Thursday. If you prefer Bill Hupp, he will be on the call for uh, SLP in that one. But Spring Lake Park trying to get back from a couple of three game losing streaks here in their past, but they'll be taking on Andover and then they'll be at Centennial. So they have some opportunity here as you look ahead to get back to their winning ways. The girls soccer standings, Blaine Bengals on top, not having lost yet this year. Centennial just below them, seven and one in the conference. Spring Lake Park, five, one and two. So our three teams, Going right back to back. One, two, top. three, girls soccer territory, North yes. Metro TV. This area is uh, is the place for girls high school soccer. Bengals ranked sixth in the state. Conference champs last year, but uh, remember, they lost to Centennial in the rematch in a section final. 1-1 after overtime. It was settled on penalties, won by the Cougars. So this is going to be a spicy rivalry matchup coming up tomorrow night. That's the opener at five of our doubleheader. Blythe and I will be there. Uh, really excited for that one as Centennial. who are unranked by the top ten right now. They're one of the top ten teams in the state by the QRF. They had a loss and a draw in their first two games of the year. They've won seven straight since. So you know they're up for that one against Blaine. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you just sort out those kinks right away and you just get back to it. And that's exactly what the Cougars have done this season. So it's going to be a, a battle. That awesome cat clash we've been waiting for. Yeah, Blaine and Centennial, uh, not just conference rivals, but also sections rivals, mm -hmm. too, that uh, battle each other on the way to state. Now, as we take a look at volleyball schedules, Blaine having a couple losses here lately, but they'll be on the road versus Tatino Grace and at Anoka and at St. Francis. So three games on the road as they try to come back to the winning side of things. But Centennial, they did win last. They, they were able to beat Coon Rapids on the road and they'll take on Andover and home and at Champlain Park there on the road. So they'll have some opportunity to stay winning. But Matt, wow, we, we've seen a lot. We've seen a lot. We've heard a lot about fall sports, but we have one more sport to get to, and that's head into the court, and we will smash it, volley it, all the way back to tennis. As we head to the courts where the Bengals host the Maple Grove Crimson, you're seeing Larson and Helmer Jonke for the Crimson and Holly Shogren for the matchup in first doubles. As this one gets started, you see them up by two games, the Crimson, but Helmer Jonke wants more as she smashes it down, putting them up here three games right off the bat. But we fast forward, now they're up by four. I love this one by Holly, sends it short, and now her teammate sends it long. An unreturnable ball gives the Bengals their first win here in set number one. Now they're up. The Bengals, you see them having two games now finally in this first set, but can't quite do it there at the net. Shogren gives that game to Maple Grove. This one bounces over, ticks over the net. You see that hard shot. You see that effort trying to get that one back into play, but she splits the playing Bengals, and she did that so much, Helmer Janke at the net. They won it 6-1 in the first set. It's 5-3 now, match point. Jonke sets it up, and Larson puts it down. Lexi was getting her serves in, and then she would set me up for a nice volley put away, or we'd be getting to balls and keeping it consistent on the court when we had to. Usually when I volley, I like to look for the open court, and oftentimes in doubles, it's between the net person and the baseline, deep in the corner. Yeah. I feel like I fit in. Always like the age, when you look on like the paper, it's way different. All these girls are like four years older than me, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like the baby. Yeah. I think our communication is very good. So like when we got lobbed and we had to switch, I think that was very good. And when our partner sets us up for a nice volley, we usually are able to put that away. 
of course, like there was a couple times where the Bengals, they were able to grab a game. What did you guys say to each other? Or how did you rally behind maybe getting back on that positive side of things? Well, it'd always be like, we got the next one or play defense on this point and just typing each other up on the court and yeah. being ready for the next point. Yeah, definitely also keeping it consistent because sometimes when we're down, it's because of unforced errors, and so sometimes it helps to just try and keep the ball in play. Well, it's definitely something. I know I always have someone from my family to cheer me on, but it's a lot of fun having them. Sometimes it can be a lot of pressure with where my sister's at and my dad being a coach, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to playing a lot better teams um, near the end as we play Elk River. And I look forward to playing my best and seeing if we can pull out a win. Yeah, Elk River is going to be a fun match. It's going to be tough. I'm also looking forward to if we get to see YZ in the section finals again. I'd like a rematch on that one. <laughs> but yeah, we're just excited to play better teams. All right, coming up on uh, an exciting stretch here of the high school sports season in the fall. As we, we mentioned, we're halfway home in high school football. Uh, Blythe, me and you have got a huge matchup tomorrow. Blaine and Centennial doubleheader. I'm especially, though, looking ahead to that, that girls matchup, too. As we mm -hmm. said, rematch of the section final should be fun tomorrow. Yeah, it's always tough when you have a team that gets the win in the regular season last year and then get defeated in that playoff round. So... Let's see what happens yeah. this year and if that's telling for what's more to come in playoffs too. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow on North Metro TV. We got more soccer on Thursday. High school football coming up Friday as Blaine hosts Maple Grove from Ted LaRue. Our crew of Mike Peterson, Ab Becker, Joe Hoyley, and Brett Wong. I'm Matt Dean alongside Blythe Whaley signing out here in episode five of the Sports Desk.